I have a new ship from Game of Thrones, and it's Tormund and Brienne, because, okay, there's very little going on between these two uh, verbally, which, as most ships are, it's not perfect. <laughs> I'm I'm really pumped. Why 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 do you think it's perfect? Because okay, I have a few reasons and they're multi-tiered, but I'm going to start with the main reason, which is they're both outcasts. So Brienne, mm. you remember, she's been tormented before. Yes. She's been called, you know, she she doesn't subscribe to the femininity of Westeros. She does her own thing. And you know what? I love you for it, Brienne. Uh, but she, you know, she's generally accepted this life that she's never going to find romance and she's just going to be you know, a stalwart knight. She's damn good at being a knight. She's by awesome. The way. Yeah. Um, and we have Tormund, Tormund Giant's Bane. So basically, don't laugh. Uh, that's his name. <laughs> basically, he's, you know, he's a wildling. He's been on the mm. wrong side of a, a wall for years, a magical wall for years. And he's been, you know, kind of beleaguered down. We, he's currently at the wall now, the, the watch. Doesn't really care for wildlings, as you may assume. So he's kind of an outsider as well. They both have good hearts. They're both great fighters. Um, and they're also kind of primed for each other. So basically, uh, so Brienne is from the south, right? So she's mm -hmm. not going to hate the wildlings like the north does. Right. Right. So there's more, there's more acceptance. She doesn't for, have for that, that in her. Yeah. And also, Tormund comes from a culture where there are plenty of warrior women, where mm. they're, they're cool with that kind of thing and also <laughs> value it, admire it. So he sees her strength and is like, "Yeah, yeah. that's a hot lady." And and I do actually, I actually do like the idea of uh, being a pariah myself. Like I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I just, I just, I just self love myself. No, but but I, I, I like, I like the idea of, of two two pariahs essentially. Like, hey, you're you're, I, I might, I do my own thing. You I do would say thing. two very unconventional people who hey. are good and lovable and have a lot to offer the world. <laughs> And each other. And each other. And each other. That's and you know what? That scene at breakfast, we sexily chewing the bread, like, mm. <laughs> and she's just like, that's, that's how all good romances start. <laughs> and just and they just take giant. You know what I really like about uh, 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 just like game, like all that kind of Game of Thrones and those uh, shows like into it is like whenever they, they, whenever they eat. Is like they make chicken look like it's the best thing in the world. Like oh, the Game of Thrones cookbook looks delicious, I, but it's just like wait, meat. Wait, there's bread. a cookbook. There's an official cookbook. There's an unofficial cookbook that my friend wrote. Uh, yeah, and there's going to be a new World of Warcraft cookbook. That's gonna be amazing. Oh uh, there's God. a lot of haggis <laughs> recipes. <laughs> <laughs> Which where the where did you get haggis? Like I mean the the off topic the oh, World sorry. of Warcraft yeah. one did say like get some canned haggis. And I thought, where the hell do I get canned haggis? <laughs> yeah. You know, at your local haggis store. Scottish canned goods store, of course. You are there. You know, next to the spotted dick. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but there's also some precedent that in the book that's, because, okay, listen. They, these two characters never meet in the book, right? right? But we look at the Game of Thrones series, and a lot of different things are happening. There is some diverging. They're, they're not even in the same location in the book, but here they are in the same place. And it's giving this opportunity for two characters who, I mean, aren't literally aren't supposed to meet, uh, to, and then you get to see these different parts of them, how they play off each other. I mean, I'm maybe reading into this too much. So, 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 it's like most shipping. Let, let me let me ask this: What do you think their first date would be like? They went out. They would go about. They would go about. Like, I mean, it wouldn't be a coffee. It'd be like, I think it would let's be go a, slay this. I think it would be a battle. It, right? Like, like they'd be on the same side, probably under the banner of Jon Snow. Uh, true Lord of Winterfell, and maybe go slay some Ramsay Bolton. I mean, wouldn't that be fun? I think that I and think, beautiful. I think that's that. Would, that I, I would agree. I, that's what I, I would. I would. I would totally think they're that, both loyal. Yeah, and they're both badass fighters. And that, that's so. It would be totally fitting of like, let's go slay something. Uh, and then impress each other with their killing skills. <laughs> like all good romances start. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I do want to bring up, though, that in A Dance of Dragons, there is a young woman uh, named Alice Karstark who arrives at the Wall. For political reasons, she has to get married. She ends up with a fen named Sigorn. They be their marriage becomes a symbol of the new world that's possible, the, the, the bonding between wildlings and those below the wall to work together to defeat the greater evil and she has one of the best lines of the book after Jon Snow asks if she's scared of her new husband she says 
let him be afraid of me. Uh, but then they become, they live somewhat happily ever after, as much as you can in, in this world. In that world. <laughs> yeah, they are the, they are the black so and white this, cookie. This could of, be a symbol yes. for the future mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. of characters that aren't really in the show or at all in the show. Like, there's a, um, like, uh, like, who would you pair the faceless one with? I mean, another faceless one. <laughs> I guess that would the make sense. The genitalless a one. There's the, the <laughs> they just keep swapping faces. Yeah, they swap I mean, each other's faces. Ooh, I like that one. There's a, ooh, uh, I like that one. Like and then it's kind of freaky. It gets really weird. It's really weird. <laughs> There's an eyes wide such, shut situation. You know, yeah. it's it's real weird. <laughs> <laughs> Things get kinky. Um, I think that's a good way to end this story. Yeah. So I'm not the only one who loves this pairing. I think. They've swept the internet so far for those of us who watched uh, this episode of Game of Thrones. I mean, it may end up different. It yeah. may, they may end up hating each other, but I thought it was so fun and cute and full, full of potential, which is what shipping is, really. You, you, you make a lot of something out of a lot of nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, but audience, what did you think of this couple? And who is your favorite Game of Thrones couple? Uh, note, most of them are broken up because one or both are dead. Let us know what you think <laughs> below in the comments, and please like and subscribe for more, and check out Facebook.